Ooh, it's nice and warm in there, Mrs. W. I can feel the heat coming off it. 60 degrees. Yeah, fantastic. And you can see now that you can't actually recognise the green anymore as it's beginning to break down. It's well on its way. It certainly is. You can see it's really starting to break down. That's really lovely and warm, that is. And I know one of the comments I had from Andy was, how do we access it? This is how we access it. This is the hatch. And you just pull it out when it's all done. You can see that's well underway. I'd like to thank you all for your lovely comments after our last video on Thursday. One thing it does prove to me is that there are many ways to compost. And you are all little composters out there, aren't you? <laughs> Which is amazing to hear. So good. It's so good for your soil and to keep your soil in good health. Today's programme is not about compost. Because in today's programme, we need to plant out some onions. But then we need to go to the dark side. As I said in the March tips, sometime during March, you want to be harvesting your remaining leeks, which is exactly what I've done. I have come out at this point now because this will be the first plot that we actually begin to plant into. First thing we want to do is to get some onions in. These are the Rheinsberger that we sowed back in mid-January. They're of a good size now to go out into the plots. So I've dipped my holes and in they That's the onions planted out. You know, alliums are one of the best crops that we grow. Not just because we have to be quite good at growing them, we have been successful with them over the years, but the Allium family in itself. You can actually virtually have an onion taste for most of the year. These onions will mainly be for storing, so when they're harvested in July we shall cure them and put them into storage and use them as and when we need them. But then to supplement them we have the overwintering onions that are in the poly. We also have spring onions in the poly that will be ready very soon. We've got some more that will be coming outside here now that the weather is beginning to warm up and spring is not far away. And then of course we also have our lovely shallots which equally store really really well. We love our leeks, don't we? We do. We really do, yeah. So yeah, virtually all year round you can have an allium taste. But the allium family in particular are susceptible to several diseases. The serious one being white rot. And we know all about that, don't we, Mrs W? Yeah, we have had a bit of that in the past, haven't we? <laughs> uh. And actually where our leeks were, that was where we had the white rot, wasn't it? It was back in 2019. Yes. And I decided to put our leeks there last season. We've been new dig now since 2020, haven't we? Yes. And actually the health of that soil must be improving immensely because none of our leeks were affected by onion white rot. So it seems to have recovered, repaired itself. I'm not saying it's down to no dig, I can't prove that, but 
certainly I think having good the good soil health has actually really helped this because normally you get onion white rot and it's going to be seven plus years before you can even attempt to grow anything else in there. So thankfully whatever's gone on it's worked really well for us but there is another serious problem that's affecting alliums something we noticed arrived in our New Dig Norfolk garden last year and that is the allium leaf miner it can decimate crops Certainly whatever you do manage to harvest, you won't be able to store anymore. The Allium leaf miner actually arrived in the UK back in the year 2000. And it's quickly spread. This is the first time we've ever had an attack of it, isn't it? Mm, yeah. Yeah. And if you're a regular follower of our channel, you know that we covered our leaks last year, right at the beginning. And thankfully we didn't get any attacks on the leaks. The, the leaks were largely very good this last season, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, they have been good crop. Well, we had our onions where the purple sprouting broccoli is and here where the cabbage are. We started to notice that the onions weren't sort of growing in their normal upright habit. Some of the leaves were on the floor, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. And if you looked really closely at them, you could see little puncture marks in them. That's the Allium leaf miner. To be able to successfully raise your crops, what we need to do is to understand how the Allium leaf miner works, because then we can start to form defences against it. In March, the females will be flying around. They will land here and she will lay her eggs right at the base of where your young onion plants are. Then she'll have a feed and she'll start to go after some of the leaf. At this point you will have no idea that she's even been here. What will happen next of course is that those eggs will hatch they will then crawl up onto your now onions which are up here and they will start feeding on those leaves. Eventually they'll work their way down to the bulb and start to eat the top of the bulb. That causes problems in itself because that opens the onion up to a secondary infection. And that's when you start noticing something is not actually really good with your onions and of course it's too late. Now those larvae will then pupate and then in September and October they will emerge to start the cycle all over again. They will lay their eggs and then feed on any alliums that you'd have. Like us your onions may be gone by July but You'll still have things like your leeks that you've put in. And don't forget, within the Allium family, there's things like chives. They will go after the chives as well. Garlic and shallots. Anything that's in the ground that is from the Allium family, they will then attack those plants. The females will then have another feed on your plants and off they will go. The eggs that they've laid will overwinter in your soil, ready for next spring to start the whole cycle all over again. So now that we know that, what can we do to prevent it? Well, first thing is if you thought you might have had it last season, but weren't sure, because a lot of people think once they see the leaves going flopping on the ground, or they're not quite growing upright, First thing you think as a gardener, I need to water these, but it won't be the water. It will be the allium leaf miner. So don't grow your onions in the same spot. And I know that there's a lot of gardeners out there that you have an onion bed because you build up that fertility and you grow your onions there all of the time. 
Well, if you have an attack of this pest, you will need to move those onions somewhere else so that the eggs that are in the soil can't actually emerge and eat your young seedlings. That's the first thing. Now we move our onions from year to year. They were there last year and there, and they were actually up in our old plot five, weren't they, before yeah. the polytunnel yeah. was put up. So now that you have your onions planted, they need to be covered. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, oh no, not something else that's got to be covered. And I thought the same thing. I don't particularly like to see all of my plants covered, but it's a necessity for us, especially for brassicas, because we have pigeons, we're surrounded by woodlands, we have pigeons around us, and they will just eat and eat those brassicas. And of course also, during the summer months, those brassicas are susceptible to the cabbage white butterfly. Of course, there are other ways to control that. We don't choose to use those ways. We just cover them. And we're successful. We managed to raise good brassicas. But think of it like this. You only need to cover these in March and April. And for me, just to be on the safe side, I'll leave them on probably till the second week of May. Then the covers can come off any allium that you're going to plant and have in your garden in September and October, they will need to be covered so that they can't then go after those plants. So essentially it's for four months of the year, March, April, September, October. You will then break their life cycle and you'll be free of that pest. But of course, you'll need to continue that each and every year. Because if you just move them somewhere else the following year and don't cover them during that period, they're just gonna fly in all over again and the whole thing will start all over again. So our next job, Mrs. W, is to cover this onion bed. Okay. That's our onions netted and for us, I'm going to keep them on until at least the second week of May to be on the safe side. I don't want my onions being affected by this Allium leaf miner this season. When it comes to your onions, whether or not you want to take these measures to protect from the Allium leaf miner, if you're going to be planting out anything really at this time of the year, mid-March, it's a good idea to cover them anyway. Onions in particular, they're quite frost hardy, but what they don't like is these cold winds. And we have some of that at the moment. We've got an easterly wind coming in off the coast, and it's cold, even though the sun is shining. And actually, it's about 11 degrees today, but it doesn't particularly feel it. No, it doesn't. <laughs> so, yeah, always fleece your things, whether it be onions, whether it be putting out young uh, brassicas, just fleece them over for the first few weeks of their life. It'll help them become established and they'll get away nice and quickly. The other thing with onions is, is that do keep them weed free. Onions have that upright growth habit. All alliums do. And so they're not able to smother any competition from weeds. So do make sure that you're as weed free as possible. One of the awkwardnesses of having a cover is that if you're not in control of your weeds, you're gonna to have to keep lifting it to weed. Now that's being no dig, we see less weeds. We still get weeds, but we see less weeds. And I'm quite confident I won't need to lift that cover too often to pull any weeds out. Do let us know in the comments, have you suffered with this pest? And what measures have you taken? Are they sort of the same as ours or do you do something different? Because it's something we need to talk about in the community. It can be devastating when you get it, it really can. We lost several onions last year. That's meant that we've actually now run out of our onions that were in store. Normally they last us until sort of end of March, beginning of April. But just losing those onions has meant we just haven't had enough. 
and I'm determined it's not going to happen this year. Do have a great gardening week and we, we shall see you next Thursday back in the garden.